First, skyrocketing energy prices. I firmly expect oil prices to hit $300 a barrel or worse in the upcoming year or two. Perhaps I am wrong in such a prognostication, but the Russians still have control of some very important taps and will be hard pressed not to employ that strategic advantage as their position in Ukraine and on the world stage deteriorates as it inevitably must. These higher energy prices will of course hurt the world's poor and developing countries hardest, as well as those who in the West must rely on low wages or fixed incomes. The idiot environmental policies that we insist on pursuing are exacerbating this problem unforgivably, and it has become obvious in countries such as the UK and Germany that the hypothetically compassionate and working class positive green types and their ilk are perfectly willing to sacrifice today's actual poor to the hypothetically thriving poor of their imaginary future utopia. Second, severe food shortages or even famine for a minimum of 150 million people and substantial pressure on the price of basic necessities, even in the developed countries. As for example, Ukraine alone produces 20% of the world's high grade wheat and will soon be unable to ship that food or to store what will be this year's much diminished crop. These shortages and worse will hit hard as early as the fall of 2022. Add to this problem, a looming scarcity of fertilizer, 30% produced by Ukraine and Russia, which will affect harvests and prices worldwide, then we have the makings of a humanitarian disaster on a scale not experienced since the 1960s. Third, mass migration. The countries most affected by the aforementioned food shortage will be precisely those North African and Middle Eastern nations from which the last mass migration that so stressed Europe, to say nothing of the emigrants themselves. Expect immense mass movements of desperate people by November of 2022, and all the exacerbation of religious and nationalist tension and internal polarization along political fracture lines that accompanies a sudden and uncontrollable influx of people. Fourth, and most immediately, if the buildup of NATO forces continues, and they are in fact then moved into battle position, a real likelihood of the use of tactical nuclear weapons on the Russian side to deal with that threat. 300,000 have been very recently put on high readiness, prepared for immediate deployment, as opposed to the 40,000 currently available for rapid reaction. All this appears to be based on the assumption that the Russians will back down if threatened enough. And it's not as though the economic sanctions have been working or have been without major collateral damage on a scale yet to be seen. The ruble is doing just fine and oil prices are not finished escalating. The quarrel that lies at one part of the bottom of this war will not disappear at all and may even worsen if the Russians somehow lose. With regard to that final point, the war of ideas that has given rise to the current real war will continue its destructive and nihilistic progress, even if the Russians capitulate and agree to the re-establishment of the pre-invasion boundaries. It is not obvious that while that war of ideas continues, that the Russians will even allow a prosperous Ukraine allied more closely with the West on their border. This is a war that cannot be won in the most fundamental sense by the mere defeat of Russia. The civil war in the West can only be won on the intellectual or even the spiritual front, and the victory will be defeat of the radical ideas of Marxist inheritance that are currently destabilizing our societies, Russia and Ukraine included. When was the last time that a Western leader spent some time face to face with Putin, not by Zoom? not by Skype, in the same room, breathing the same air, communicating directly with all available verbal and crucially important nonverbal channels fully functioning, sharing a meal or an anecdote or a drink, engaging in all of those social interactions of inarticulable complexity 
aimed at establishing a relationship, overcoming inevitable distrust at a personal level. Has it been several years in any real sense? Has that simply been too long?